Um, I'm up here and I'm like, why is there a pan here? Uh, that's a ballast that's being used, and whoever wired it in put the pan there to protect it. Hmm. That's a interesting one. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, this morning the customer is complaining about an exhaust fan not working. So I had them turn on their hood switches and they all fired up. Now, um, I hear a noise coming from this one. I don't know exactly which, well, no, I do know what fan it is. Uh, and it's actually not this fan, but this is one's not working either. I can hear the motor like turning on and off on internal overload. Let's look. Okay, so that's not good, but this is the one they're actually complaining about because this is one of their main hoods and it's not running. Now, all of their hoods are controlled off a of main, uh, one main hood switch. So this one's running, this one's running, and this one's running. Um, we're still gonna check them out. They do not do routine maintenance here, so I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have broken belts and stuff. Uh, we're gonna open this one up and see what's going on though, because this is the primary fan. I have not checked power, but the fan itself, you can tell it's been overheating because look at the sticker. The motor is not hot. Um, I have not tried to rotate anything. The belt looks fine. Let's go ahead and kill the power. Oh, check that out. Oh, interesting. Look at that. So someone had turned it off. So it looks like this motor, we're going to have to get in there and check power to see if we actually have three phase going to it. So someone must have come up onto the roof and tried to turn it off or something. But this one right here is doing something. So we can't ignore this one at the same time. I uh, opened up the uh, disconnect switch. Okay. I've got my meter right here. We're going to go ahead and check power and see what we got here. So line one to two, we have 116 volts. Line two to three, we have 213 volts. And line one to three, we have 117 volts. Now this is a 208 three phase system. So we don't have the proper power, which makes me believe that these two issues might be related because this one sounds like it's going off on overload too. All right, now this fan is actually 115 volts. It's not a three phase fan. And we have 122 volts, 120 volts, whatever you wanna call it. We have 122 going to it. So this motor is gonna be bad. Um, now, I will tell you that this is not a critical exhaust fan, this one right here. Um, so I'll talk to the customer, but we definitely have to figure out the issue with this one right here and the voltage issue. So we're going to go downstairs, figure out where this power's coming from, maybe find the motor starters and evaluate a little bit further. All right, this is their hood panel up here. Talk about some serious inaccessibility. Look at this motor starter cabinet, but I'm having to reach over this to get over into here. What a nightmare this is. But we need to check power at one of those starters. Uh, more than likely we have a bad starter and or we could have a bad breaker for that exhaust fan So but we need to get in there. So I'm gonna try to remove some tiles It's gonna be difficult, but all right in order to uh, get this tile down so I can access this panel I got to pull this emergency light down. So I'm currently disconnecting power safely And then we got to fish this tile out with these uh, fire sprinkler in there, too All right, I'm able to get up here now. It was a chore, but getting these tiles down around fire sprinklers is fun definitely an art to it. So um, I'm up here and I'm like, why is there a pan here? Uh, that's a ballast that's being used and whoever wired it in put the pan there to protect it. Hmm. That's a interesting one. All right, so coming in here, um, I've narrowed it down to exhaust fan number two. The motor starter's actually tripped, but it's not, the motor starter's bad because we still have power. So let's go one and two, we have 213. Two and three, we have 115. And one and three, we have 117. So that motor starter is bad and it's not properly disengaging the uh, contact portion. So um, power is disconnected at the roof. I'm going to hit reset and see what happens. Now we're reset. Okay. And let's check power to see what's going on here. One to two, two twelve, two to three, two fourteen, one to three, two twelve. So the motor starter itself is bad because it, when it disengages, it's not 
you know, working properly. But what caused the motor starter to trip is a whole nother question. We don't know what caused it to trip. Is it just a bad motor starter or is it a bad motor? Regardless, we're gonna have to change that motor starter because there's uh, we gotta have that thing functioning properly. Let's do a uh, voltage drop test. One to, uh, cross line two, nothing. Cross line three, nothing. So we have no voltage drop across the contactor itself, but when it tried to disengage or trip, that's when uh, it single phase the motor. Interesting. Judging by the heat pattern on that motor too, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna think this thing's been single phasing for a while. All right, so we're back up on the roof. We're gonna verify that that was the right motor starter. I was taking a guess, so, because uh, I was the only one that had bad power. So line one to two, two thirteen. Two to three, two twelve. One to three, two twelve. So we have three phase power. We need to put the switch cover back on so we can actuate it. And then we got to test current. And again, because of the heat, high heat, you can see how it's been running under a load and it wouldn't trip until it potentially tripped a breaker. So I don't trust this motor, um, but I, I still want to see what's going on, maybe what caused it to trip. We also need to inspect the internals of the fan because sometimes they can get towels in there. So we don't know what initially caused the motor starter to try to trip. Safely close the lid where nothing was going to short out because we need to uh, lift this fan up. Um, pulled this guy again. You don't want to do this with this running. Let's open this up and see if there's any damage in the wheel um, Oh check that out Looks like a bird was trying to make a nest in here and maybe this fan got turned on I don't see anything crazy the top of the wheel definitely needs to be clean. I don't see anything crazy in here, but I have a feeling Someone got a surprise that could have something to do with this fan doing this, but I don't know, you know? It's hard to say. Other than that, when we lift this up, um, I'm not seeing any issues here. Nothing's stuck, it moves. There's no, uh, no play in the motor, no play in the bearings. Everything looks fine there. I mean, at this point, we really just need to fire this thing up and see if it runs. We're allowed to run 4.2 amps, it says right there, for 230. So 4.2 amps is what we're allowed to run. We've got that guy on there. Let's turn it on and see what happens. One, two, three. Yeah, that thing sounds rough. Woo. Yeah, that motor sounds like crap. It's got bearings going bad in the motor. And those bearings over there need to be greased for sure. Yeah, that thing is rough sounding. So I have a feeling we just have a motor going bad. It's been overheating and single phasing because it tripped the motor starter. Um, huh, okay, so I gotta find a motor and I gotta go see if I have a motor starter. Um, but I gotta get this thing up and running. So at a minimum, we're gonna put a motor in it for now. All right, it took me forever. So I left my office this morning at seven. It took me an hour to get up here, hour to diagnose hour to drive back down to civilization because I'm out in the boonies and then uh, hour to pick up part it's just taking forever <laughs> um, it's like 12 12 30 p.m. right now so I um, uh, got everything I need got a new motor I do have a new motor starter too I'm gonna try to replace it because I'm actually worried about it being stuck and potentially ruining the new motor so we're gonna try um, conduit bandsaw of everything that I think I'd need. I got a giant bag for bringing that stuff up. Buckets, all that stuff works too, but we're gonna get this motor swapped out. All right, I got the new motor installed. You got the old motor sitting down here. Now, when it comes to doing these motors, they're a little heavy. It's not the end of the world, but what I do is take all three bolts out and leave one in. Then push your stomach up against the motor, pull the nut off and drop the motor down. Now, this motor is manageable. If it was a, you know, 100 pound motor, maybe you'd need to do something different because you don't want to hurt your back. Um, now, next thing is I got the pulley put on. I uh, adjusted it closed to where the other one was out. It's the same pulley. And I just barely got the key in there. It's the, the, the height isn't set yet. I loosened up the tension on the motor tension and uh, bolts right here. So that way we can put the, the belt on. The belt is loose because you typically don't want to stretch these things out trying to get them on. And then now we're going to line up the pulleys and adjust the tension on the belt 
and then finish in the electrical and everything. So we're not just ignoring the obvious. As I'm doing this, I'm noticing that this, this box is cracked in multiple places and we have a burnt wire. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see, but right in here, there's a wire that looks like it's got some corrosion going on with it. So it's inevitable that we're gonna to have to replace this disconnect switch too, but I can't do that right now because I don't have it. And on top of that, I don't even know if I can change the motor starter today. We're gonna to hope that we don't run into any problems because I might have to come back first thing tomorrow morning. Today is Friday, but I might have to come tomorrow morning because this exhaust fan, uh, according to my other technician, I haven't gone down there. All these exhaust fans are controlled off of the same breaker. So in order to change the motor starter, I'm gonna to have to shut off power, but I can't shut off power to the rest of their hoods. So I'm gonna do my best to get this motor up and running and uh, I'll have to investigate some more to see if it's safe to leave running or not. All right, got it all wired in as best as possible. This definitely needs to be replaced. We're gonna bump it to see if it's going in the right direction. And it is not going in the right direction. You can clearly tell from this style of fan, the rotation should be this way. There's also a rotation arrow, so we need to reverse the rotation. We can very easily do that at these connections right here. So we're gonna flip two phases and then tape them all up and then uh, Actually, we're going to start it up and test uh, current and voltage when it's running just to make sure we're not getting a voltage drop. All right, we are running in the right direction. There's a little rattle going on, but we'll silence that. It's probably something that needs to be tightened. Another thing is, is there, there's supposed to be a gasket under this, this spe space right here, and the gasket's missing, so it is going to have a little metal on metal. And I believe uh, my wrenches might be part of this too. No? It's amazing how hot this fan is right now how much heat is coming out of it. They've been cooking the entire time, which is crazy. Um, but we're running under current. We're allowed to run 4.8 amps. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But yeah, we're allowed to run 4.8 amps. We're running 2.9, going in the right direction. The pulley set where the other one was. So now we need to do a couple tests to make sure we're getting proper voltage and I gotta decide what we're gonna do about that motor start. You know, there's a lot of people in this trade. There's a lot of technicians out there. How do you separate yourself between every other technician? How I do it is by going the extra mile, by looking at the big picture, trying to diagnose things, looking at everything, right? And then it's the little things, picking up your trash. These little tailings, oftentimes I will see them left on the roof. Yeah, they're small. Yeah, you know what? The customer's probably never gonna come up here, you know? but clean up after yourself and then do some. Now, I'm not gonna clean up this entire roof, but you can clearly see that the customers left stuff up here. You know, there's stuff over here. I pick up a couple things every time I come up and throw things in the trash. Leave it, you know, if you were in the scouts, you know the motto, right? Leave it better than when you arrived, right? So same thing, try to take it upon yourself to clean up after yourself and be thorough. And that is how I separate myself from everybody else. All right, I am back today. Now, um, I gave the management specific uh, shutdown instructions to get them through the night temporarily. They shut down the breakers, so that way they didn't single phase the motor. Um, I have the control voltage turned off for this, and I don't know if you guys can tell, but this contactor is welded shut, and that's why it was single phasing. So, when the motor starter tripped, the contactor wouldn't completely shut, and or any time they shut off the hoods, it single phases the motors. So. We're gonna go ahead and replace that. Got a new motor starter right here. So it's just a process of switching it over wire for wire. Um, it's kind of tight, but you know, it's not a big deal. We'll get it done. Just gonna double check one more time. I already tested everything. But make sure we have no voltage in here. No coil voltage, everything's dead. So we're good to go. We'll still proceed with caution. Um, you don't want to uh, mix things up. It's a little tight in here, so I am gonna mark the wires.
right, it was tight, but we got it installed. Nice and neat. Everything's good. Everything looks fine. I double tightened or pulled on everything to make sure nothing was pulling out. Now remember these motor starters come in a tripped position. Um, redid a little bit because the old motor starter had uh, the coil voltage coming into the top, so I ended up pulling the wire. We'll end up putting all these uh, line hides back on, the covers and everything. Uh, so we can go ahead and hit, uh, well I'll turn the power on and then we'll reset it. And we gotta set the current too. That's another thing, the old, module was set like way too high like 10 amps that's a mess too so um yeah all right we're gonna make sure we set it right but let me turn on the the control voltage first and test the operation okay control voltage is back on all the motor starters are pulled in so when we hit reset there we go we're pulled in now and you can clearly see we're good so we're gonna set the current, the overcurrent, and then we're gonna put the panel back together and then go verify. Just double check the exhaust fans running in the right direction, but we're pretty much done as long as uh, the exhaust fans running in the right direction. All right, we are running. Um, everything is good, it's the right direction. Running at about three amps of current. All is well, I'm wrapping this one up. Again, I talk about this all the time, but understanding how your systems work, right? We can't understand everything, but even having a general understanding of how the basic exhaust fan systems work is truly going to help you to be able to diagnose better. So I kind of had an idea what exhaust fans did what. I knew that the secondary fan that wasn't running isn't a priority, so I brought that up to the customer. We'll deal with that at a later date. I needed to get their primary fan going, okay? This particular customer, I told them to stop cooking, but they didn't listen to me, so so be it. It's not my problem. Now, where you need to really be careful is some hood setups, right? Sometimes the cooking equipment is very, very close to the hood. They may have it elevated on stands and different things like that. Um, what I have seen in the past is, especially on fryers, you can actually set off the Ansel system or the fire suppression system if the exhaust fan is not running especially on the ones where the cooking appliances are elevated or the hood system is a lower profile hood system. So it's very important that you cover your butt. The last thing you want to do is have a fire suppression system go off while you're working on something and then the customer try to blame you, even though it's not your problem, but always cover your butt, tell the customer, stop cooking, you know, and then leave it at them. If they don't stop cooking, then so be it. Right. But I understood what was going on and I knew that, you know, I needed to look further than just the simple, uh, you know, motor starter tripped, right? It could have been easy for me to reset that motor starter and move on because it had the right voltage when I reset it, right? And the motor started up, but it sounded really rough. And then you just kind of look at everything. I get people asking me all the time, why don't I change bearings in motors? Because you have no idea what kind of damage has been done inside that motor. In this particular situation, you could tell that this unit had more than likely been single phasing for a very long time. And understanding what happened, every time they would turn the hood system off, that motor would single phase. And then potentially it might restart or it might run tripped. Um, you know, so, and you can also tell from the paint damage, the way that the paint had been just peeling off that motor, it melted the stickers off the motor, that motor more than likely had some serious internal damage. So I didn't feel comfortable leaving that motor running. Now I know my customer and my customer wants to get it done and they want it fixed and they don't want me to have to come back. So I decided to go ahead and change the motor along with the bad motor starter. Now, I did bring up to them, too, that, uh, you know, we need to change that that power switch because it's got some cracks in it. It's no longer NEMA 4. It no longer has waterproof um, uh, features to it, essentially, right? Because the, the, the thing is cracked on the top. So I definitely want to do that. I want to replace that. But that wasn't part of today's scope. It was more or less just getting the fan up and running. Now, I had all intentions of also replacing the motor starter on the first day, right? Because this was a two-day job, Friday and Saturday. I had all intentions of changing the motor starter, but by the time I got back from driving out, you know, to where I had to go get the parts and stuff, which was at least an hour away, uh, it was already the middle of their lunch shift, and they were cooking on all their other fans, including this one, and there was no way that I could shut down the system for 45 minutes uh, you know, we would clearly set off a fire suppression system if they didn't stop cooking. 
Um, and I gave them the option. I said, hey, I can fix this and be done with it today, but you have to shut down. I told them for at least an hour, let me change this motor starter. Then we can start fire you back up and we'll be done. And they opted to have me come in the next morning, which I didn't have a problem with it. I shot in there. I was in and out of there in about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, you know, so it wasn't a big deal. But again, let's go back to the, the opening clip. Um, you know, that was kind of funny. You, you run into weird stuff in these restaurants, right? And so be observant and make sure you cover your butt. I did bring that up to the customer, let them know that whoever installed that light ballast for them, you know, didn't install it properly. They should have installed it in the light fixture itself, but for whatever reason they didn't. So, you know, I'm covering my butt, taking mental note of everything. Uh, remember that when we're on the roof, you shouldn't be wearing headphones. If you're wearing headphones, I understand it for hearing protection in certain situations, but you can hear so much about how the equipment operates. You can hear things across the roof. You know, I could hear that, that exhaust fan turning on and off on overload. The first one that was 115 volts. So always, uh, look at the big picture, take a step back be thorough and separate yourself from the next guy. That's what I try to do is always try to separate myself from the next guy trying to be thorough. And then if the next guy comes in after me, right, he has nothing to talk. Like he can't talk crap about my work because I try my best and I note everything down. And even when I don't do the best job, I bring it up to the customer and I note it in the invoice, you know, uh, basically, you know, eliminating any criticism because I already told them, look, we had to do what we had to do to get you operational. This is how I had to approach it. The customer signed off on it. We're good to go. So cover your butt. I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end. If you guys have questions or things you want me to cover, throw them in the comments, shoot me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Uh, there's great ways to support the channel. If you're interested in doing so, the easiest way is watch the video from beginning to end. Uh, without skipping through anything. Uh, there's Patreon, PayPal, YouTube channel memberships. Um, there's links in the show notes of the video. Uh, if you want to purchase any tools, truetechtools.com, you can use my offer code big picture, one word. Uh, if you know what you're going to buy, shoot me an email. I can generate an affiliate link. I get a little affiliate commission when you use my offer code, and I get a little affiliate commission when you use my affiliate link. It's not a lot, but every little bit helps. So do me a favor. Let me know if you're interested in purchasing any tools. I can generate those links. And uh, yeah, that's it. I really, really appreciate you. And uh, we will catch you on the next one. Okay.